organic membrane to the inner ear and a very important function of the middle ear is that it provides impedance matching which I will tell you in detail <coughs> and then uh, it protects the inner ear from the loud sounds and uh, that is uh, achieved through a reflex which is called tympanic reflex finally uh, your middle ear it provides a phase differential effect which is called the auricular coupling now what is this auricular coupling hmm you see that uh, the sound waves which strike the tympanic membrane they they do not reach the oval and the round windows simultaneously uh, there is always a preferential pathway to the oval window and that is because of the auricular chain so this phenomenon it couples the sound preferably to only one window of the cochlea and as a result of which a differential pressure that is produced between two windows and that is called auricular coupling why do we need this uh, pressure difference between uh, the oval and the round window this is actually this is required for the movement of the cochlear fluids and uh, how how the acoustic separation is achieved at that between the two windows the acoustic separation that is achieved by actually two factors by an intact tympanic membrane and by the presence of a cushion of air around the round window right so because of this separation the auricular coupling that is achieved and uh, it has a significance because it 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 contributes uh, to the loudness around uh, around 4 decibel uh, when the but keep in mind that the tympanic membrane should be intact for that contribution so this auricular coupling that contributes around 4 decibel to the loudness of the sound. Right, and then there is also another mechanism which is called acoustic coupling. Okay, so this is another mechanism for the sound stimulation of the inner ear and uh, how it is different from the auricular coupling because this acoustic coupling that results from the uh, uh, middle ears acoustic sound pressure now the, this sound pressure I told you the middle ear acoustic sound pressure that is uh, that is uh, that is produced due to the motion of the tympanic membrane and the sound pressure in the ear canal since the cochlea cochlear windows they are separated by a few millimeters the acoustic sound pressure at the oval and the round window they are not identical because they are only by a few millimeters they are separated now this difference in the sound pressure between the two windows that is called acoustic coupling right and that was different from the auricular coupling both these auricular and the acoustic coupling they contribute to the loudness of the sound perceived or heard 
or received in the internal ear. So that was one of the functions of the middle ear. I told you that middle ear performs certain other functions also apart from uh, the transfer of the vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear and those functions were uh, impedance matching and a protective reflex which is called the tympanic reflex so one by one we will discuss these uh, functions uh, first I tell you about the impedance matching okay have a look at this picture Uh, you see, a person uh, inside water cannot hear the sound uh, which is produced out of it. Why is that so? Because 99.9% .9 sound, it gets reflected from the surface of the water due to the impedance of the fluid. Because the fluid, it has much more inertia. So... This 99% 99.9% sound that is reflected from the surface of the fluid. So the question is if uh, the sound is reflected when it is transferred from the air to the water then, then how do we hear clearly through the labyrinthine fluids which are present in the inner ear you see uh, nature has compensated for this loss of energy by by having the middle ear in between and uh, how does this how does our middle ear compensate for this loss it converts the sound of greater amplitude but lesser force to the sound of lesser amplitude and greater force okay how does the middle ear compensate it converts the sound the sound which was of greater amplitude but lesser force to a sound which is of lesser amplitude but of greater force now this function of the middle ear that is called impedance matching or it is also called the transformer action you can call it impedance matching or you can call it the transformer action of the middle ear So you see that how does your middle ear it compensate for the loss of the energy because of the impedance that it matches the impedance of the fluid with that of the air. Hmm, who is this guy? Mr. Hemholz described the impedance matching for the first time in 1868. Uh, and this impedance matching, which is also called the transformer action of uh, your middle ear. Uh, now, how this transformer action is achieved by middle ear? That is through these three factors so the impedance matching that is accomplished by uh, the hydraulic action of the tympanic membrane lever action of the auricular chain and uh, the curved membrane also has a contributory effect I give you the detail one by one
First, the hydraulic action of the tympanic membrane. And uh, that is achieved by focusing the sound pressure from a larger area of the tympanic membrane to a smaller area of the oval window. You see, the area of the tympanic membrane, it is much larger than the area of the foot plate of the stapes. So, uh, by focusing the sound pressure from this larger area of the tympanic membrane to the smaller area of the oval window, basically what happens that the effectiveness of the energy transfer between air to the fluid of the cochlea, that is increased, right? The energy transfer the effectiveness of the energy transfer that is increased. Uh, in fact, the um, total effective area of the tympanic membrane that is around uh, uh, 45 square millimeters, while the area of uh, stapes, uh, the foot plate of the stapes, that is only around 3 to 3.2 square millimeter so the average ratio that becomes of 21 is to 1 okay uh, but the vibratory area which is the effective vibratory area of the tympanic membrane that is only a uh, two-third so the effective aerial ratio that is reduced to around 14 is to 1 okay Now this hydraulic action of the tympanic membrane that basically is a mechanical advantage which is provided by the larger surface area of the tympanic membrane which is focused on the smaller area of the oval window. Hmm. The second factor through which the impedance matching is uh, achieved uh, that is uh, the lever action of the ossicles. I tell you that uh, uh, malleus and incus they behave as a first degree lever system okay because <clears throat> the handle of the malleus that is around 1.3 times longer than the long process of the incus. So overall, this thing, this produces a lever action which converts the low pressure with a long lever action at malleus handle to a high pressure with a short lever action at the tip of the long process of the incus. Okay? So what happens that the lever action, it converts the low pressure to a high pressure. <coughs> All right. And the um, last and the uh, third factor which contributes in achieving the impedance matching that is the uh, curved membrane effect which is achieved through the buckling motion of the tympanic membrane. You see the tympanic membrane that is buckled here. And because of this buckling motion uh, which is achieved through the attachment of the malleus, the uh, tympanic membrane, uh, it is kept in its most neutral position. And when it is uh, in its most neutral position, the eustachian tube that equilibrates the, uh, that keeps the air pressure equal in the middle ear with that of the atmospheric pressure. And when the tympanic membrane that is buckled here by the attachment of the malleus, 
what happens that the movement of the tympanic membrane that is more at the periphery than at the center where it is attached with the malleus okay so what does the buckling motion what does the uh, buckling achieves a buckling motion of the tympanic membrane that basically results uh, in an increased force while a decreased velocity so whenever uh, the sound waves they vibrate the eardrum uh, the tympanic membrane it vibrates with increased force but decreased velocity and as a result of which it produces a fourfold increase in the effectiveness of the energy transfer again so you see that how this curved membrane it uh, increases the energy transfer the efficiency with which the energy the sound energy that is transferred from this eardrum to the inner ear because it has to overcome the impedance which is uh, being offered by the fluid in the internal ear which is way greater than the impedance which was being uh, offered by the air <laughs> so what do you uh, understand so far by the mechanism of impedance matching so impedance matching is a mechanism by which the middle ear it matches the acoustic impedance between air and fluid and uh, it's a mechanism which uh, maximizes the flow of energy from air to fluid of the inner ear and it has to be done because the fluid it has far greater inertia than the air does as I told you earlier <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> how the impedance matching is achieved <clears throat> the tympanic membrane combined with the auricular system the bony system that matches the impedance of the fluid because the amplitude of the movement of the foot plate of the stapes that is around three-fourth as much as the movement of the handle of the malleus while the auricular system that decreases the distance of the movement although it decreases the distance of the movement but it increases the force of the movement 1.3 times by its lever action and uh, then also the surface area factor that contributes because the surface area of the foot plate of stapes that is less than the surface area of the tympanic membrane so all these factors they cause around uh, 22 folds increase in the force to be exerted on the fluid of the inner ear just to uh, overcome the impedance which is provided by this fluid So these are the that's the summary of the mechanism of the impedance matching and how effective this impedance matching is that is called the efficiency of this mechanism and the this uh, efficiency of the impedance matching or the impedance efficiency that is around 50 to 75 percent of perfect 
for the sound frequencies between uh, between uh, 300 to 3000 cycles per second right so if i uh, summarize the impedance matching we can say that the middle ear it uh, converts the low pressure high displacement movements of the eardrum into high pressure low displacement movements because this conversion is needed for the cochlear fluid movement In the absence of the auricular system, the the sound waves they 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 still can be transmitted to the inner ear. But the thing is that the intensity of the hearing that will be de that will be decreased, and it will be so much decreased that uh, it will be around fifteen to twenty decibels less. So uh, you can imagine that a uh, in the absence of this impedance matching, a loud sound will be heard as a whisper. Right, so I hope that you have uh, mm, comprehended the impedance matching mechanism, which is uh, achieved through three factors which is the auricular lever action the factor of the surface area and that through the uh, curved membrane effect right how the auricular lever system helps because the length of the handle of the malleus that is uh, way greater than the long process of the incus so that lever action that magnifies the energy around 1.3 times then comes the factor of the surface area which is called the hydraulic action hydraulic lever action of the tympanic membrane because tympanic membrane is around 45 square millimeter while the stapes foot plate that is only 3 to 3.2 millimeter square millimeter so that thing this uh, surface area factor that magnifies the energy transfer around 17 times and finally the uh, curved membrane effect that also contributes because uh, in this uh, effect your tympanic membrane that acts as a uh, catenary lever and uh, the sound waves they are they are much more focused on the malleus as a result of which the energy transfer that is magnified two times so as a whole the mechanical advantage which is uh, provided through the impedance matching that is of around 30 to 35 decibels <sighs> right so that was all about uh, the impedance mismatch and keep in mind that uh, this is an important university question So if the impedance matching is not provided then what would happen as I already told you that if there was no middle ear system then uh, 
99.9% uh, of the sound waves they would be reflected back from the oval window right so middle ear by its by its uh, impedance matching uh, mechanism it allows uh, around 60% of the sound energy to be dissipated in the inner ear So this is how the uh, middle ear that performs a very important function of impedance matching and uh, the other function which is a protective reflex uh, the middle ear it provides that is called the tympanic reflex. Uh, this protective reflex that is also called the attenuation reflex. You should know the alternative names. And uh, you know attenuation that is a general term. And it refers to any reduction in the strength of the signal. So when the loud sounds they are transmitted to the central nervous system through the auricular system. This reflex, this tympanic reflex it occurs. Uh, but after a latent period of 40 to 80 milliseconds. Right. So what is the mechanism of uh, the tympanic reflex? The tympanic reflex, it causes the contraction of the stapedius and also to a lesser extent of uh, the tensor tympani muscle. So as a result of these contractions, the foot plate of the stapes, it moves out of the oval window and the handle of the malleus, it moves inward. So the whole structure becomes very rigid. These two forces, they oppose each other. They are in opposite direction. You see the foot plate of the stapes that is moving outward while the handle of the malleus that is moving inward. They are towards each other but in the opposite direction and this is how they make the auricular, the bony chain system, they make this system very rigid. So when it becomes rigid, it uh, does not transfer the sound vibrations effectively. So because of this rigidness, uh, this reflects, it reduces the auricular conduction of the low frequency sound which is mainly below 1000 Hertz and when we say the low frequency sound it means the loud sounds so whenever uh, the ear that is stimulated by the loud sounds this protective reflex this comes into action and it hinders the transfer of that much energy just to protect the inner ear from the loud sounds or the low frequency sounds. So these are the functions of uh, the tympanic reflex that uh, as I already told you that uh, it's a protective reflex so this tympanic reflex it protects the cochlea from the damaging effects of loud sounds then it uh, also masks the low frequency sounds in the loud environment as a result of which it allows a person to concentrate on the sounds above the thousand cycles per second means if you are uh, say you are in a concert and your friend is talking to you then uh, because of this tympanic reflex you would be able to focus on his conversation despite the loud sounds in the concert and uh, finally the tympanic reflex it decreases a person's hearing sensitivity to his or her own speech The reflex, the tympanic reflex that is activated by the 
collateral nerve signals to the muscles of the middle ear at the same time when brain activates the voice mechanism. So whenever a person it starts speaking, uh, this reflex is initiated because of these collateral nerve signals which are sent to the muscles of the middle ear. Because a person's own voice that is considered as a loud sound. So that was tympanic reflex. You should uh, memorize the advantages of the tympanic reflex which is a university question. Uh, now I will tell you some minor uh, definitions or introductions that uh, what is uh, natural resonance that uh, basically is the property of different parts of the ear to allow certain sound frequencies to pass more readily uh, for example that the your external auditory canal it has a natural resonance of uh, 2500 to 3000 hertz the tympanic membrane it has a natural resonance of 800 to 1600 hertz and the auricular chain uh, that carries a natural resonance of around 500 to 2000 hertz. Hmm. Since we are, um, I was uh, teaching you the middle ear, so we look at the applied physiology of uh, the middle ear. Uh, that's a very uh, common a diseased condition, the otitis media. Media because mostly mm, uh, that is concerned with the middle ear. It is basically an acute infection of the middle ear, uh, mainly by the bacteria and um, or it may be associated with the infections of nose and throat. Uh, its symptoms, they include the reddening and the outward bulge of the eardrum and this eardrum it may rupture also unless the prompt treatment that is received and uh, children they are more susceptible to this otitis media as i already told you because their eustachian tube that is smaller and it is not vertical until they grow up it is horizontal so that eustachian tube that acts as a passageway for the transfer of the throat infections into the middle ear because their auditory tubes they are horizontal since they are horizontal so they decrease the drainage so uh, it's a common infection of children so that was all about uh, the middle ear next time we will start with the inner ear in case of any query, you can ask me directly. Take care.